All right, here we go. Welcome back to the Buzz Pod. I'm your host, Nico Blatchman. And joining us today is one of very few people to be granted exceptional status in the CHL. Draft is signed and playing in the New York Rangers organization, an elite defenseman, Sean Day. Welcome to the pod. Ew, how's you it like going? That? Yeah, that was a great intro. Man, I'm loving the hairdo. I'm loving the headband. You're looking nice and clean, fresh and clean during the quarantine. That's what I was saying before. I had a big lumberjack beard going. I had to shave it so I looked good for this. Hell yeah, and and you succeeded. You did what you had to do. Um, uh, What have you been up to right now during the quarantine? Where are you staying at? Well, my family up in Traverse City, Michigan. We, uh, I was down in Maine, uh, and then the season got called off, so we all got to go home, obviously, and then came right here. Uh, And once we found out, like, everything was shutting down, like the AHL and East Coast, we were just, everyone kind of just relaxed and just been playing Xbox, honestly. I think my boat and jet skis are getting here in a couple of days, so that'll be fun. Oh, wow. That's going to be big time. Get you out of the house a little bit. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, you, you got anything cracking on Netflix or no? <laughs> I actually just got into uh, <laughs> Star Wars The Clone Wars. It's like, oh, really? I, I've, That's always, a- I've always been into like Star Wars for some reason ever since I was a kid. And then I just randomly saw my parents got Disney+. Plus. And so I, okay. st- I started watching that. I'm like a little nerd for it. That's unreal, dude. Speaking of uh, your parents, I mean, they're Canadian born, but um, I actually just learned this. You were born in Belgium and then you uh, even spent some time living in Singapore. So uh, talk about a cultured guy. Yeah, I don't remember anything from Belgium, but I remember moving to Singapore. That was where my little brother was born. And then, uh, Lived there until I was four, moved to Michigan, and then obviously I lived in Canada for hockey, but uh, yeah, I've lived in Michigan since I was probably, I think, four years old, or maybe five, Um, so yeah, I I consider myself American more than anything. And um, did you, like, was there anything about hockey when you were over there in Singapore, or did you, like, not even know what a stick was, like, when you were four years old? I skated for my, like, the first time ever, I skated in a mall in Singapore. Uh, I didn't know what hockey was, obviously. I I don't even remember skating for the first time, but that's the story. And uh, That you heard. Yeah, my my parents always say, like, oh, your first time skating was in Singapore. But, uh, I I mean, I remember my first time actually skating back in Michigan. I I hated it. Like, I, I hated skating. I always said my feet hurt. Uh, but I always wanted to play because my two older brothers played. And so I, I, I obviously stuck through and played, but I remember the first, like, I think the first year we like, we did like these little like skills lessons and I would get off the ice early every single time. I was just like, I hate this. Like, I'm like a little four year old, just like hating life. I'm like, why am I doing this? (laughs) Why are you making me come here? Yeah. Uh, uh, but damn, those uh, the, the feet pain made you an elite skater. Uh, now you're a six foot three, two hundred and twenty pound absolute unit. Can you talk a bit about your game? I, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously there was you know coming up in AAA, I was always like an offensive guy, but um, I think my first year of juniors was was obviously really hard, just being young and everything. Um, so I didn't put up a lot of points, but my second year, I think I had like 40 points, but that was like the year I kind of got my confidence going and everything like that. Um, I knew I still had to like work on defense and everything if I was going to play pro. Um, and then my third year was kind of like a weird year because things happened with, I don't know what happened with like the coaches and everything, but there was coaching changes and I wasn't one of the go-to guys anymore. Um, and then the next year I got traded to uh, Windsor. And I, you know, I got my game back. I was really good defensively, um, good offensively. And that was, that was the year that I really felt like I took off um, with what I was like kind of wanting to be as a hockey player. Like I, there was, 
a time where I was kind of like questioning myself. I was like, what am I doing? Like, what yeah. type of player am I? Um, but my last two years of juniors were were a lot of fun. Um, you know, because our teams were good. I was with Windsor and Kingston, and yeah, obviously yeah. winning the Mem Cup, and then uh, Kingston. We went to the third round. I think yeah, the third round. So Eastern Conference Finals, and we ended up losing to um, Hamilton, who ended up going to the Mem Cup that year. So we had my last two years were you know good teams. I was playing well. And we had hilarious groups of guys on those teams. So it was like I actually just had I just had Logan Brown on. I just released his pod today while we're recording this. Um and he talked a bit about that team and how fun that was. We like there are stories with that team that like obviously I'm not gonna say on here, but yeah, obviously. But like we had so much fun. Like there was there was just like so much humor like we were so funny like it was so funny every that's day what a winning ta- that's a winning team always has man oh dude like and one thing about like when i was with mississauga like i was always scared to kind of be my like you know me like i'm just a goofy guy like i like having fun i hate yeah, but you also you also you went in there very young like you were exceptional yeah. status you were the youngest guy by so much so i can see why you'd be like a shy guy kind of yeah. can't really put yourself in there yeah, but even, like, my second and third year with them, I was still, like, I couldn't, like, be myself. I felt like I was, like, scrutinized a little bit too much by the coaches and whatever. But um, when I went to Windsor, like, the coaches were so cool with me. Like, they knew I was just, a, like, a good locker room guy. Like, I was going to play my game. And they knew, like, how to, like, flip my switch, I guess, in a way, where they knew yelling at me and getting on my, you know, nerves on my nerves yeah (laughs) i don't want to say but uh no they they pushed the right buttons and we had fun like i don't know if brownie talked about like the six weeks we had yeah well he also he mentioned the parts that were that were just tough like he said that there was a lot of skating a lot of getting bagged but i know that there was a lot of things that he didn't talk about because i did bring up that one guy that uh threw up in the in the penalty box uh mid game and i was cracking up when i saw that because i was watching that game live and i was like these guys have probably just been boozing like just bagging and boozing it was it was weird because like they they had it down to a science right like like we went into that and we thought we were just gonna die like we did die it was the worst six weeks but the best six weeks because like, we got knocked out of playoffs, and then we were kind of just all down on ourselves. Like, like we kind of just all wanted to party. And Yeah, well, that's the truth, man. See, long season, <laughs> man. And once we – like, they gave us a couple of days to kind of just do our thing. And then after that, we were all just really locked in. Like, we still got to have our fun. But, like, come game time, like, once we played St. John's, I think was the first game, like, we were all so hyped up. Like, the last, like – I don't know, two and a half to three weeks, we just, we shut it down. Like we were like going, like we were having so much fun on the ice, like scrimmaging, practicing. Uh, We were still like kind of bagging, but not as much, but it it was just, it was crazy. Like we were doing two a day. Like the first week was absolute hell. Like I remember we had to get to the rink at like six, run like five kilometers and then do like one group would do like bike sprints like a bike workout and the other group would do a, a gym workout or something like that, or go on the ice and then they'd flip flop. And it was like the worst time of my life. I remember every single day I'd get back. It was me. I lived with Sergachev and we'd get back and we would just sit in the hot tub all day. <laughs> we were just like, this sucks. And, but like looking back at it, it was so fun. Like I still have the picture of the calendar cause they had to take it down cause they wanted to move on from our team for the younger guys um and i didn't want that to be like a reminder i guess and but i took a picture of it and i i still like it pops up on my phone i sent it to the boys all the time like like dude remember this like it sucked it was so fun but uh i think that's how juniors always is man like during juniors like those long roadies and shit those are the ones that you hate the most but then you look back on it and those are the ones that were so much fun yeah like yeah, even, like, and with Kingston, too, like, 
like obviously my buddy my best buddy growing up max jones like yeah was on. kingston like i don't know a week after i get traded there we live together <laughs> and so like we're like best friends back home best friends during the hockey season now and we had other guys that got traded like cliff who he's hilarious and uh well, oh, Liam Murray, the other guy we lived with. Like, our you guys had a gross team, yeah. We were really good, and there was a time period on Kingston actually where me and Jonesy were both injured. <laughs> we were, I was out for like a month, he was out for like a month and a half. That's trouble, <laughs> it was so funny. We would just go to the rink and like. We would just, like, say hi to everybody and then go do our workout, just leave, go home, play Xbox all day. That was right when, like, Fortnite came big. And so we were just... You guys are both big gamers. Yeah, we are. We were, like, just living it up, man. It was so much fun. I can't even imagine that, dude, playing with your best friend from back home in the OHL. And you were both drafted at the time already, so, like, top prospect kind of guys. Um, can we, like, bring it back to that? Um to like, uh, I don't know, talk a bit about like you, the NHL draft. Like you get drafted in the third round to the New York Rangers. Um, obviously, like you were granted exceptional status when you were younger. Like maybe you didn't get picked like where you expected to get picked like when you were like 15. But um, dude, you get taken in the NHL draft third, one, third round, uh, 81st overall to New York. Um, talk a bit about like your first like pro camp experience. And then uh, leading into like your first pro season. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll start with the draft. Like the draft was a lot of fun. Like even getting to see like my friends get drafted was really cool. Obviously, um, but then like uh, when I got, so I remember blacking out. And I don't remember like who I said like anything to so i remember after i came back i ended up going to everybody and i was just like i don't know if i said anything to any of you guys but <laughs> like thanks <laughs> thanks for everything and uh so that was cool i mean like first camp was i mean it, you see all the guys that you grow up watching so that was obviously really cool um uh but it like i i feel like after the first year it's like it's this, like it's the same thing coming around, so you know what to expect. You know the guys now, and it's not you're not as much like a, a you know, starstruck feeling. It's more of just like you're going there, you want to make a good impression. Um, uh, but you want to make know, a team. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, you know, you want to at least give it your best shot, even if it's not a realistic thing that's going to happen. Um, yeah. But even just to like get your name in there and. You know, then down the road, maybe at the end of the season when your season's done and they're on, you know, their AHL team's going on a run or something. I mean, my team always made the playoffs, so I couldn't do that. But, um, <laughs> um, but like just just little things like that, you have it in the back of your head. Uh, but no, it was it was a really cool experience, and uh, obviously, I mean, my dog's barking right now. Uh, but I, I mean, it was really cool. Like I, I tell people that I know now that are gonna go into it soon, like enjoy it. Like, it doesn't matter where you go. Like I signed my first year, just like the first rounders, right? Like it didn't matter to me. So. Yeah, yeah. Actually, let's talk about that because you signed your first year, um, and then you stayed in the O. Uh, a bunch of guys do that, but you go. Wait, right? I'm right, right? What'd you say? You signed your first year and you went back to the OHL. Yeah, like I got drafted and signed and played that that year in the O. Okay, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That was the so year then, I was with Windsor. Okay, so you played two years after you signed in the O. Yeah, then I played Kingston. Okay, so can you talk about how that works? Because, like, I know, like, does that burn any years off your contract or, or like, how does it work? Like, your contract starts when you start playing like pro. It just burns the um, signing bonus. So your contract isn't in effect until you play pro. Um, okay, I understand. I understand. Yeah. So your first pro year, you went in there. Um, so you go to camp like always, and then you start the season um, in the AHL with Hartford. 
You get 46 games played, uh, three goals, 11 assists, 14 points. And you go uh, down to, to Maine and get one more point, 15 in way less games and 19 games. Um, your your camera just went away. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> All right, we're back. All right. Um, so to get into your uh, your first pro year, can you talk a bit about um, your first pro season? Split time mostly in the AHL. Um, I believe you ended the year in the ECHL where you ended up having. Uh, success with 15 points in 19 games um but um can you talk a bit about uh just your first pro year the jump from from junior to pro hockey it was hard but it was like it was like a weird type of hard it was like just like you're playing guys that are so much older than you on some teams like some teams there's guys that are around your age but i mean the oldest guys are like 30 32 years old um, or man, but I started the season in the coast and oh. actually, and it was Christmas. It was the 26th of December. I got called up and played the rest of the year. And at, at the beginning, I wasn't playing a lot. Like I was getting scratched like every fifth game. And then I think it was like right around well, like last 20 games or something like that. Uh, they just said like, do your thing. Like we're going to let you play power play and, blah, blah, blah. And I ended up having 13 points in my last 20 games. Wow. And then, so I was like feeling really good and then had hip surgery in the off season. Um, How'd that feel? It was unreal. Like getting it done finally. Uh, just cause I had a labrum tear and my hip bone was all messed up and it was just affecting me too much. And I finally just called out, like, I'm getting this done. How uh, long was that bothering you for? Was that, like, a whole year thing, or, like, had you, like had you felt it? Four years, yeah. Oh, like wow. Years. I was just playing through, and then I finally was just, like, I just played really good the last half of the season, like, showed them what I could do. Like, hopefully they kind of just let me do this. And so I did it, and uh, then, obviously, this last year I started the season in the A, and it was just a weird numbers game and I, I was the odd man out. Um, and so I, obviously I got sent down to the coast and then um, I think I played like 14 games in Hartford and I got sent down after that. So uh, you played yeah, that's, in that's six. the weird thing about pro is like in the off season, like they just, any team can sign whoever they want. Right. It's like, and if you're not performing to what they want or what they expect or whatever it is, or if you don't fit their little puzzle piece, it's like, okay, well we can go without you kind of thing. So yeah, it's a little bit weirder. Cause in juniors you're once you're kind of like a made person, you're there. Or even if you have some sort of ability, you, you can find yourself in the lineup and um, obviously like roster spots. There's right. And so I don't know, it's just a, di it's different. Yeah, no, I can see what you're saying. Like, would you say like it's just way more of a of a business like than than even major junior? Because like I found major junior was like pretty business like. Like, I mean, I was traded, I was promised things that weren't given and stuff like that. And I'm sure every hockey player in the world has been promised things that they weren't given by a hockey coach. But um, would you say that like it's way more professional in the sense of like? Because you see guys all the time. I mean, this didn't happen to you. I mean, you were up and down a bit. But, like, you see guys that go, like, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. So do they just, like, not really care? Like, is it just kind of, like, if they need you, they call you and, you know? I kind of know the answer, but, like. Yeah. I mean, it is a business. We'll say that. Um, but yeah, like, that's what it, like, it is. It's a business. And they don't have – feelings and they don't expect you to have feelings they expect you to be a good soldier and you know do what you're told and I mean I know guys in New York system that um got called up and down between the coast and the a like daily it was like it was like yeah, on a, it was a, what's that 
I've heard like insane stories about that. Right? Continue. Man, yeah, like like a Tuesday they'd get called up, they'd play a game, you know, Wednesday night, and then they'd be sent back Wednesday night to play Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night in the coast, and then get called back up Monday to play another Tuesday game. And and they're driving all these like they're driving back and forth, right? And it's just like, I mean, luckily I didn't have to do any of that. I know like being down on the coast was not what not I wanted. Where you wanted to be? Yeah, yeah, not where I expected to be. And I, I don't think I should have been there. But at least I didn't have to go back and forth. I said that all the time. Like, I would just be like, at least I'm not driving back and forth, honestly. Yeah, every single here. week. Yeah, like... Yeah, I feel bad for some of the boys. Like, but I don't know. Like yeah. a lot of the guys that were in that position, they liked they, it. They, they, they honestly no, they wanted to be down. Like they didn't even want to go up. They just wanted to be down and just have a team, like be a part of a team. Um, yeah, because I find that, that that's actually one of the questions that I wanted to ask. Like playing for, I mean, I know it's the same organization, and like it's always great to get called up, like no matter what. But um, like playing for two different, because it is two completely different teams, is it not? Like it's different coaches, different players, you know. So like, it's a completely different atmosphere. It is like, especially with Maine, like where I was in Maine and Hartford. Like, Hartford is run like an NHL team, which is is great. Like it Ideal. gives you experience. You see what it's all about. The practices are high intensity. Um. You know, the coaches, they're there to win, basically. You know, that's what they want and make you guys better. Um, and then in Maine, it was just fun. Like, our coaches were – they played – well, the head coach, Riley Armstrong, best coach I've ever had, honestly. Like, he's the man. He was the like, – he was the only reason I, I didn't go home, honestly. Right. Uh, just because I knew he was going to be there. He he played in the AHL for a long time. It's Colby Armstrong's brother. Okay. Played, played in the NHL or AHL for a long time. Got a couple of NHL games. Uh, finished his career on the coast, so he knows like what the grind is about and like all that. And he's he's That's like the best. he just left hockey like four years ago or something. So he's like fresh out of it. And practices were like high intensity, but they would be short and fun. Like they would be like battle drills but they're they were fun <laughs> and there was always like a reward at the end of it shootout at the end of practice and the games like you just wanted to win for the guy yeah because, I because he was just so cool like he was just the coolest guy and uh yeah he like i could i could tell you even cooler stories off this but like he's yeah. just the man like like I I expect him to get a job in the AHL soon, and if he does, I will. I will <laughs> any day of the week. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, dude, that's unreal, dude. I find that there's nothing better than playing for a coach that you want to play for because it just yeah. makes going. I mean, dude, going to the rink every day should always be something that you look forward to. And I find sometimes when you're playing for a coach that you don't uh, get along with or or that you guys butt heads too often, then then going to the rink kind of becomes a bit of a battle. And and I find when you're playing for someone that you like, it's the opposite. It's just even more fun to go to the rink and yeah. uh, be, be around that. Yeah, and the one thing I, I liked about it was he gave freedom to make mistakes. Like, he wanted you to improve. And he knew, like, I was an offensive guy. And, like, in Hartford, they kind of gave me a leash where it was, like, we know like you're going to be running the power play. You're going to be skating the puck up, like making plays. We know you're going to turn it over, but the leash was like, it was like one mistake and boop, you're done. Like, yeah. you're back. Whereas Riles was like, like I, I could make 10 mistakes, but he was just like, keep trying, like get better, get better. And it's so sick. Like, and my rookie season, that was the only reason I was, I lit it up at the end was, because in the coast, I was doing all this stuff 
that I I did not have the balls to do it in the A at the beginning. You were afraid to get like the, yeah right? yeah. And so I was just some rookie that they didn't know what I was all about, and so I got to do it all down on the coast. And then when I got called up, I was just like f this man, like I'm gonna I'm gonna ball out. <laughs> and yeah, so, I, I love that. But, uh, and like for me, like I'm not I'm like I'm not like politically correct and like all that so i'm not i'm not really like the coach's like pet right yeah I've oh, never oh, i've yeah. never been that and i've always just been like that goofy guy that like is fun in the locker room like the guys like and stuff and like <laughs> and so i feel like i'm like really like misunderstood by coaches a lot of time oh where, my like, god they think, like i need to be like really serious and like like grr and yeah. shit where I'm not like <laughs> i just kind of goof off and like have fun like i work hard like I, obviously i've lost a bunch of weight and you know put in all the hard work to be playing pro and so I, i've kind of put that to the side where everyone thought i wasn't working hard but my next thing i'm working on is for coaches to appreciate the goofy yeah <laughs> Do I hear you? And like, it's something that it's, it's a great topic. I'm so glad you brought that up because I find in the hockey world, like guys, when you're playing on a hockey team, like your boss is a hockey coach, right? And like your boss is the person who decides um, how successful you're going to be. Like they decide how successful they're going to allow you to be. Right. So um, I find so many coaches misunderstand players um, because of the reason that you just said, just because of the kind of guy that they are. I know that it's happened to, to guys like me, um, like that are that kind of like, pure, I know you're a locker room guy, but you're a locker room guy plus exceptional status, you know, skill guy, you know, good skater, solid defenseman. Um, me, I'm just like more of a pure locker room guy. <laughs> guys like me especially get misunderstood because like, we're there to, to create that light vibe and take a bit of the seriousness out of it just because a lot of the guys are too serious and like too in their heads. So I feel like we kind of level that stuff out and I can see like how coaches can misunderstand that. But at the same time, um, and when I said that's the best that you had a coach that played the game, um, that's why I love playing for guys that played the game because they were in that atmosphere and they were able to appreciate guys that do um, that do that, that bring that that looseness, that energy into the room, that goofiness, and they were able to 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 live it, you know, and appreciate it, and really see like what it means to a team. And I find like that's the biggest difference between a coach that played and a coach that didn't play. You know what I mean? Like anybody can look at a fucking Sidney Crosby and be like, "Yo, I want him on my team. He's a sick player." But like I find like all the championship teams and stuff, they have those little parts like, and you hear stories after they win it of like those guys that were in the room always joking around and stuff like that. So I love that you brought that up because man, guys are misunderstood every season in every league. And like, it, it sucks because um, at the end of the day, like we do it unconsciously, like it is who we are, but we do it consciously, like with good intentions. You know what I mean? It's just read badly. Exactly. Like I, uh, yeah. Cause yeah. <laughs> like in ju in juniors, like when I used to not work out and I was like really out of shape and stuff, I could see why I, I would get kind of like picked on for that because I was yeah. being a goofball. Like I wasn't and working hard and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. But like now it's like, I'm in the gym every day. I'm crushing it. Uh, Expect like after my hip surgery, I was supposed to be back six and a half months. It was a six and a half month recovery. I did it in five months because I just like I worked so hard in the summer to get back for opening night. Like I wanted to play opening night and I did that. So I got back for opening night every single day. I was in the gym, main like rehabbing my hip, uh, like after games, I was in there. Um, making sure I was getting my stretches in, my, my glute workouts in, so my, my uh, muscles wouldn't weaken and then my hip would get bad again. But I was in there every day. And I, I, I was 215 this year. And that was the lightest I've been since I was like 13 years old or something. <laughs> and and uh, 
like I, I just I felt really good um, skating wise everything and so it's obviously a disappointment that all that work kind of didn't work out for me this year but that's where like I'm gonna do this exact same thing this summer and I'm not gonna have the rehab part and so next year I'm just I'm hopefully gonna just gonna kill it with whoever I'm with. Yeah, I, I, I love that, dude. I love, I love your, uh, your look on it now because like, dude, I, if you want me to be completely honest, a guy like you could easily fucking like be like, fuck this, you know, like how can you not see how good I am yet? Like, look at everything I've done. But, um, I love the way you look at it, dude, because like you said, like last season, you worked your bag off to come back early from rehab. And I find something that a lot of guys learn when they go through rehab is like, I had a guy come on the pod earlier, um, uh, Jasper Weatherby. He talked about um, he had like a femur surgery or something. He was out for a season. And he talked about how when he was rehabbing, he w- he had to do rehab every day. And he was like, dude, I've never worked this hard like when I was healthy. And now that like I got a rehab, I'm working this hard just to get back to normal. Like, now I realize that like I can just do this when I'm healthy and improve that much more and I like see that in what you just said because like now you're looking at this summer like oh baby I'm ready I'm ready to take full advantage and and go there and ball out yeah like I had two good summers before and I was like slowly working my way up to like what I am now and I remember like like those two summers I felt better and better And then the rehab came and I was kind of like, ooh, like shit. And I ended up, my testing at camp was the best I've ever had. And it was after surgery. And I was like a month and a half ahead of schedule. And I remember absolutely killing it in testing. And that was when I was like, shit, (laughs) like this is, that was worth it, you know? And then obviously with this whole quarantine stuff going on, uh, we can't get in the gyms yet, but. I remember like right when we came home, my first thing to do, I was like, I was like, I got to go. Like I train in London, Ontario. And I was like, I got to go to London and get an apartment right now and just start training right now. I was like, get a head start for next year. Fuck yeah. And, uh, and I remember thinking that and I was like, when the he- when did I ever start thinking like that? And I was like, I never used to think like that when I was younger. And uh, obviously like when you're playing with guys that have played in the NHL and you see their work ethic and stuff like that, that obviously rubs off. I had a really good guy in Hartford this year. His name is Mason Geertsen. He was my boy. Like he was great. He was like the older brother that you never had kind of thing. And I think he's four years older than me and same type of build. Like he's like six, four two twenty or something like that. So he's like an inch taller than me, but he is just a Greek God. Like, massive shredded yeah and but we would work out every single day together he i'd get undressed and he'd wait for me and he'd go you ready we'd go into the gym and i would just do anything that he did because i knew that he knew what he was doing yeah that's awesome Uh, that's one of the biggest things that i learned was just to i love following people in the weight room like i love i hate doing things by myself i like somebody either telling me what to do or uh showing me whether it's like a, a guy like him doing it in front of me, or if I have just a trainer standing next to me right. telling me what to do. Those are like the only, the two best ways that I learn or train. Yeah. Uh, if I'm by myself, like I feel like I'm never getting anything done. Cause I never know like what, what should I be putting on? Like, what should I be doing? Like how many reps, how many sets? Right. And uh, so that's, that's one, one guy that's really helped me is Mason Geertsen. Yeah, man, that's unreal, dude. Um, yo, before we actually wrap this up, because this is this has been an unbelievable pod, I'm gonna have to figure out how to put both parts together. But um, before we wrap this up, do you think you can remember? Uh, it, this can be either pro or um, or junior hockey, like a story that's like PG. Maybe like in pro that was like, holy fuck, this is pro, or like something just like cool that was like, whoa, like they do this here, like. Just anything that, like, you can say, though, that's, like, a PG-13. I hate to put you on the spot. I should have asked you this before to think about it. But, like, do you have any just... Like, what do you mean they do this here? Like, I don't know. Like, I've heard the, I've heard the, like, 
credit cards and a hat like oh that would be terrible for me by the way i would freak out <laughs> um i mean i've seen that happen in the a um what else i don't know like maybe just talk about like i don't know maybe a story of what you did with your first paycheck maybe like i don't know you know something like did you like what was the first thing like that you bought like maybe like have you bought anything or, or oh, no yeah oh god yeah um i actually I've saved up a lot of my money, but I did splurge a little bit. Um, I bought a pair of Gucci shoes. Okay. Louis, Louis Vuitton wallet. And then, I don't know, I'm really into shoes, so I buy a lot of shoes and, like, funny clothes. Like, I love, like, clothes with, like, memes on them. Like, I'm wearing one right now. It's the Dunder Mifflin one. It's the assistant to the regional manager. Um uh, that's honestly where all my, my money goes. Other than that, like I, I've invested like all my money. My dad set me up with his, uh, his guy. So yeah. Uh, other than that, I really haven't bought anything. Like, have you I bought your own dog yet? Or are you sticking to the family dogs? I, I have my own dog. My, the Husky's mine. Um, oh. so he's actually turning three in a month. Uh, but he's the best. He just follows me around all the time, sleeps with me. Anytime I leave the house, he's up on the – I mean, he usually comes in the car with me. But if he's not in the car with me, he's just whining and whining. Oh, there and he is right find, now. So sorry, you, no. find like, you find like that's like – I mean, I'm about to go to my first pro year of hockey right now. I don't know in what league and what world. But um, do you find like that that's like – I've been thinking about getting a puppy, dude, because uh, – I think I feel like you're alone a lot, especially if you live alone. You are alone a lot. <laughs> like when I well, it was I don't know, it's different. Like when I was in Maine, you live with somebody because the the houses are free. Right. Um they're paid for by the the league or the team. Um but in Hartford, it's like a lot of the guys are married or have very serious girlfriends. And all the single guys, I just want to play Xbox, honestly. Um, or they want to just go to dinner. But you never really, like, hang out. So you are alone a lot. Um, for me, like, I, I, I love going to dinner. Um, yeah. Like, I love getting, like, a really nice dinner. Uh, and I love, like, the company and the conversation with it. Because um, you're a locker room guy, baby. Yeah. I'm just that guy. And so, no, so, but other than that, you are in your apartment a lot, but the only thing, the reason I don't bring Leo with me roadies. is, is, beca is because the roadies and I do not have a girlfriend. Why don't you get a dog sitter? Because they couldn't handle him. His name's Leonidas. <laughs> His full name is Leonidas. You think anybody's going to be able to handle that? Come on. Oh my god, dude! We're gonna have to try to see if we can get Leonidas a dog sitter, man, so you can bring her, bring her with you. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> all right, man. Well, that's that's all I got for you, bro. That was unreal. I'm gonna put these two bad boys together and create some magic. Have me on again. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I, was I, have more, I have more to talk about. What do you mean? You want to keep going? Or should I have you on uh, again? Do you have more questions? Uh, I don't got any written down right now, but I'll, I'll stock them up for the next one. I'll have, yo, I'll have you back on right before the season. Let's see how your summer training went. Okay, I'll show you my abs. Exactly. Hey, <laughs> where everybody watching is going to remember, we want an ab shot. Yeah. Before the Only season. One, Only one, though. All right, a quick flash. <laughs> Thanks again for coming on, bro. Thanks for having me.